Okay, so the first step is to remove the butt pad and I'm using a Phillips screwdriver. You just insert it into the holes in the pad, engage the screw and unscrew them. They're screwed into the wood so of the stock, so it's not very difficult to get them out. Just a bunch of turns and there's one, set it aside and then we'll get the second one. And that one's out with the butt pad. Okay, so I've repositioned the gun in the vise here to try and show you down into the hole in the stock. There's a flathead screw deep down in there. And you're going to need to take a long flathead screwdriver and unscrew that and pull out the washer and I believe lock washer that goes with it. Okay, so I've engaged the screwdriver into the slot in the screw and cracked it open. And so now I'm going to unscrew it the rest of the way for you here. And it comes out like this. And then once you feel like it's unscrewed, you can take the gun out of the vise carefully holding it all together, tip it upside down, and this large screw with the washer and the lock washer comes out. And now you can remove the stock carefully from the gun. And that leaves us with the trigger mechanism and the f where we can get access to the firing pins. Okay, so there you can see the front of the two firing pins. And if I turn this on its side, you can see here and here are two pins that have to be pressed out to let the firing pins fall out of the back. So I'm going to use a 330 seconds punch, and I'm going to tap out this first pin. And I felt that pin come out. I'm going to pull the punch out. And when I do that, you can see the firing pin. Oh, I got to pull the pin out. And then the firing pin will drop right out. Let's see if I use that punch on the front. And there's the firing pin coming out here. That's the top pin. Now you gotta keep track of which is which because they uh, they are different. You'll see the bottom one, um, I believe, has a spring on it. So we'll get that one out next. Okay, so now we're gonna take out the bottom pin. And you can see the hole right here. They're both being driven out from the same side. So I'm gonna use my same 330 seconds punch and I'm gonna tap that pin through. Now the key here is leave the punch in the, in the hole. There's the pin. I'm going to set that aside. And then I'm going to put my finger here over the firing pin. You can kind of, you can't really see it down in there, but I'm going to put my finger over the pin. And then I'm going to slowly pull the punch back out. And then you'll feel the spring tension on the pin. And that pin just slides out from underneath and comes out with its spring on. So that's the bottom firing pin with the spring. Okay, so now I've got them both out with their pins. So I've got this set up now to try and show you how they go. So there's the top pin at the top with its roll pin, or its, uh, its pin, the bottom pin at the bottom here. Now you can see the difference between them is that this pin has a extra step in it that the spring sits on. So when I put that spring on there, you can see that sits up against that shoulder. So that's how I can remember which is which. The bottom pin has that extra step, whereas the top pin, you can see here, is just that one step. 
and then the notch where the pin holds it into the into the uh, receiver. So you can see what happens is this one here, the bottom ones are particularly prone to it. Um, they get a bunch of gunk built up on them. And so what I'm going to do now is use some CLP and a, uh, a scotch Bright pad. And I'm going to clean these up so that those shoulders, particularly this shoulder right here, uh, is free of all the debris so the firing pin can extend fully into the shell. What happens is you get that buildup back here on this shoulder and that prevents the pin from coming all the way forward uh, and causes the issues that you see with, uh, with missed strikes. I only tend to have to do this every 1,500 rounds, maybe 2,000 rounds. It's not a common occurrence, but it does require a little bit of maintenance. All right, so here's my bottom pin. You can see a little bit better now how dirty that is. I'm going to put a little CLP on there. And then I'm going to take this scotch Bright pad, and I'm just going to twist the pin in there, try and get some initial grime off it. Just kind of rolling it around, uh, letting it work that CLP in there, try and clean up that shoulder. You can see how it's coming along here. So I'm going to take a minute, clean that up, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished. Okay, so a little CLP, a little bit of elbow grease, and that scotch Bright pad. And you can see how nice and clean the end of that firing pin is now. Um, so now I'm going to repeat the process on the top firing pin. So again, here's the before. You can see all the kind of fouling, and I think I've even got a little, maybe a little rust forming on there. Maybe some water got in the... Uh, Got in the gun at some point. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a couple of drops of CLP on there and then I'm going to take this Scotch Bright pad and just work this pin in there and get that dirt and fouling off there. Okay, and there's the finished product for the um, for the top firing pin. You can see it cleans up perfectly. That shoulder's nice and clear. I won't have any more issues uh, with that. Now we're going to put them back into the receiver. Okay, so the top firing pin is going to go back in first, and it's going to go into that hole right there. So I'm going to put a little bit of CLP on it, just so that it has a little lubricant, a little bit of protection. And I'm going to start that in there and slide it in place. Now you'll see the slot, or the groove rather, in the pin. If I pull it back a little bit here, that's where the pin that goes in this hole is going to hold this in place. So I'm going to push that in with that pin kind of aligned in the right orientation. And I'm going to take my pin, and I'm going to notice that on this side there's no knurling, and on this side of the pin there is a little bit of knurling. So what I'm going to do is turn the receiver over and I'm going to start the pin in that hole with the knurling up. So the smooth side of the pin down, I'm going to put that in and I'm going to start tapping it into place with my hammer. Now what I want to be careful of is that the firing pin doesn't jump back out as I'm tapping it. So I'm going to put my finger on the pin down there and I'm going to tap that into place and that is now holding that pin in there. Then I'm going to use my punch and secure it the rest of the way. Okay, so I've seated that the rest of the way in there. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to feel some resistance. And if you do, it's, the pin slides in fairly easily. You can see it's seated pretty much all the way there. I could probably tap it in the rest of the way if I wanted, but that knurling's going to hold it in place. If you start running into some resistance at the knurling and it won't seat the rest of the way, then what's happened is the firing pin has rotated in that hole and that groove isn't in the right orientation anymore. So what you want to make sure is that, that it's, it's not terribly difficult to get in. It should go in fairly, fairly easily. And then what you can do is take a slightly smaller punch and just push on the firing pin and you'll feel that it won't go, it, there's no resistance going back. If somehow you've missed that slot, you'll just push that right out the rest of the way, and then you'll have to put it back in and try again.
Okay, so now the bottom firing pin goes back in. Again, I'm going to put a little uh, CLP on it. And then, remember, this is the one that gets the spring, so we're going to put the spring on it. And then we're going to find its hole in the receiver. And I'm going to put it in place. Now again, it's got that groove that we need to get into the right orientation relative to this hole where the pin is going to go. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to rotate it slightly, put a little bit of CLP in that hole. And now I got to push that in and hold it in place with my finger while I take my pin here. Again, no knurling on that end, knurling under my fingers. And I'm going to start that pin in the hole. And you can see here, I can just push it gently into place. That You can see it's in. If I push there, you can see that firing pin moving and not coming back. And then I can push that knurling in. And then I can take my little, sorry about that, take my little punch here. And I can just tap that in the rest of the way. So it's in place. I'll do the same with this pin up here while I have it there. So now both of those pins are seated all the way and the firing pins are back in the receiver. Okay, so now we've got the firing pins back in. They're all cleaned up. We have to reassemble the stock to the receiver. And that simply happens by taking these two pieces, sliding them into one another like this. And then what I'm gonna do is put this back in my vise. I'll show you in a second it all viced up and then we have to put that big screw back down into the uh, into the stock okay so I have this repositioned in the stock uh, the receiver and the stock back together I have it repositioned in the vise rather um, and I'm holding on to it because that piece is loose if I let go the receiver falls off on the floor and I have a big mess um, this is the difficult part I got to get this uh, long bolt down in there with that washer and lock washer on it and you almost have to drop it in there every time to try and get it to fall into the right place. So I'm going to fool around with that, get it in there, and tighten it up. And I'll come back when I've got that in place for you. Okay, so a bit of a struggle, but the screw is back down in there um, and tightened in place. And I'll just show you the technique I use to kind of fully seat it. Is I um, put the screwdriver in, uh, engage the... Uh, the head and tighten it hand tight. And then what I've done is uh, I'm just going to take a wrench, put it on the screwdriver, and I go like maybe an eighth of a turn uh, with the wrench. Not too tight. You don't want to put too much torque on it and strip something in there. Uh, but, you know, a little bit more than hand tight seems to uh, do the trick. And now the final step is to put the butt pad back on. So I put the screws back in, uh, get them lined up with the holes. You can even start them by hand if you want. And then um, we just snug them down into place. And once there, you'll see they go through the rubber and disappear inside the butt pad. We'll get them, again, you know, you don't have to go ridiculously tight on these. Just snug so that they're seated in place. And I'll do the same with this bottom one here. We'll get it in place. It will, again, disappear into the rubber here in a second. And once we get that seated down in there, we are finished. There it is, nice and snug. And if we take this out of the vise, that is how you replace or remove, clean, and replace the firing pins on a Browning 725 shotgun. Thank you.